Uh, so our first session for the day, it's uh, devoted to adult congenital heart disease. The curator for this session was Dr. Yuji Hirasaki. Dr. Yuji Hirasaki is cardiac anesthesiologist currently working in Utsunomiya Hospital. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, for me to, to be able to say a couple words about Yuji. We were fellows together at Toronto General Hospital. It's more than 20 years ago. At the same time, we became friends. And uh, we managed to maintain our close relations since then. Dr. Yuji Hirasaki was instrumental for to establish um, exam for perioperative T in Japan. He was closely collaborating with his colleagues in a cardiovascular session of Japanese Anesthesiologist Society. He's actively involved in research devoted to TE and cardiac anesthesia. Apart from working in the hospital, which I mentioned, he was staff anesthesiologist in Tokyo Women's Hospital. Um, he also um, finished very fascinating PhD doing echo on sharks and other uh, species. For those who are interested, I will strongly encourage to look at these papers and uh, to see the fascinating pictures of sharks' hearts and how this work contributes to our understanding of heart development and embryology of human heart. I can see Yuji Hirasaki with us. Uh, he will introduce all speakers in this session. Um, for me, it's the first time I'm meeting most of them, so Hajime Mashte, and uh, we will um, finish with Q&A session. Uh, once again, the plan is to do Q&A session at the end of each session. Uh, we have Rasa, Rafa Alonso, who is um, the, the uh, chief of adult congenital heart disease program in our hospital. Uh, and I'm sure his participation will be also uh, a very valuable asset for this discussion. Yuji, floor is yours. Thank you, Martin. Um, uh... Hello everyone. Um, good evening from Japan. It's Saturday night. Um, my name is Yuji Hirasaki. I'm a uh, staff anesthesiologist at Saisekai Utsunomiya Hospital. I'm a curator of this session. It is my pleasure to join this pro symposium. I would like to thank Marching again and uh, the organizing committee for inviting me. As mentioned, uh, over 20 years ago, I had a chance to take a fellowship at Toronto General Hospital, and I spent wonderful time there with great colleagues, great mentors, and great surgeons. Uh, taking this opportunity, I would like to thank again uh, for their friendship and really appreciate their timeless passion for patient care and, and medical education. The main topic of this session is adult congenital heart disease and blood flow analysis. And we have four speakers. We'll take questions from the floor during each lecture as mentioned and answer them at the end of the session. We hope we, you enjoyed our lectures. The first speaker is uh, Dr. Kentaro Fukano. Dr. Fukano is a staff anesthesiologist at Saitama Medical Center of Jichi Medical University. He's a specialist in emergency medicine, as well as a certified internist. Currently, he's deeply involved in cardiac anesthesia and intensive care. The title of his lecture is Perioperative TEE for Adult Congenital Heart Disease. Fukano-sensei, onegaishimasu. Hello, my name is Kentaro Fukano. I'm a staff anesthesiologist at Saita Medical Center, Jichi Medical University in Japan. It is my pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank the committee members for providing such a great opportunities. Dr. Hirosaki and I have no conflict of, of interest to disclose. Congenital heart disease is the most common congenital defect occurring approximately 1% of live births. Due to advancing medicine, the population of adult patients with congenital heart disease requiring surgery is increasing. Perioperative assessment using TE requires some skills and considerations. 
In the first part of this lecture, I will briefly review a normal development of the human heart. In the next part, I will mention about some points to keep in mind before performing interoperative TEG. In the last part, I will discuss how to visualize the region and how to make differential diagnosis using TEG. This slide shows diagrams of the human circulatory system on the left and the fish circulatory system on the right. The fish circulatory system is simple. The heart has only one atrium and one ventricle. It pumps the oxygenated blood to the gills and oxygenated blood is sent directly to the body. In contrast, human circulatory system is very complex. In human, two circulatory systems that have distinct hemodynamic properties are connected to form one circuit. In pulmonary circulation, the oxygenated blood is pumped at, at lower pressure to lungs, oxygenated, and then returned to the left heart. In systemic circulation, on the other hand, oxygenated blood is pumped to the body at much higher pressure. This complexity explains the high incidence of congenital defects in humans. Now, I'd like to briefly review a normal development of the human heart. It takes roughly three key steps. The first step is cardiac tube formation. In this step, the truncus arteriosus the primary right ventricle, left ventricle, the atria, and the sinus venosus are aligned in the cephalocaudal direction. The second step is looping. As the cardiac tube grows, the tube begins to bend to the right. This is called dext or de-looping. The third step is septation. In this step, the primary atrium, atrioventricular junction, primitive ventricle, and truncus arteriosus are divided into two components, respectively. The atrial septum is formed by the septum prima and septum secunda. The gap is formed between the septum prima and the atrioventricular septum, called Ostean prima. The ostean prima is eventually closed, and then second, uh, ostean secunda is created in the cephalic portion of the septum prima. At the same time, septum secunda is created on the right side of the septum prima. The septum secunda stops growing and leaves the gap for the prima ovale. It is important to mention that sinus venosus, pulmonary veins, and coronary sinus are being formed nearby. Next slide demonstrates septation of the ventricle and truncus arteriosus. As shown in the picture on the left, the border between the primary left and right ventricles grows inward to form the muscular ventricular septum. Simultaneously, the spiral septum is formed to divide the truncus arteriosus, the ascending aorta, and main pulmonary trunk. The membrane septum is formed where the muscular septum and the spiral septum meet, and the interventricular foramen is completely closed. The membrane septum in the normal heart is located adjunct to the commissure of the right and non coronary cusp of the aortic bulb, as shown in yellow in the picture on the right. To summarize part one, complete septation of systemic and pulmonary circulation is crucial in the human cardiac development. Now I move on to part two. Perioperatively, 
there are several things to consider in adult congenital heart disease. It is crucial to obtain complete history of the patient, especially for little patients or patients with complex defects. It is important to recognize what kind of intervention was made in the past. As they have undergone the procedure decades ago, the procedure they underwent may not be performed today. So we should have some knowledge about those procedures as well. Ground thoracic echocardiography, PTE, is a variable tool for non-invasive assessment of cardiac morphology and function. However, echocardiography has limitations in visualizing the entire cardiac structure. In this context, CT or MRI is useful to recognize the morphology of the, of the entire cardiovascular system. We had a 37-year-old female patient, post fontan complaining palpitation. She was born with dextrocardia, bricuspid, as well as pulmonary atresia and ASD. She underwent BT shunt at 11 months old. Subsequently, she underwent atrial pulmonary connection as well as ASD closure at the age of six. Next cardia refers to a congenital abnormality caused by level looping of the cardiac tube, resulting in the cardiac apex pointing to the right. It is hard to imagine what her heart will look like. This slide shows a 3D CT image of the patient's heart from an her anterior perspective. It provides a great deal of information about the anatomy and pathology of the heart, including the enlarged right atrium inside the solitus, the absent right ventricle, and the right-sided apex. This is an adult case with epistein disease who has undergone tricuspid replacement and application of atrialized right ventricle in childhood. The picture on the left is a 3D CT image of an anterior aspect of the heart. You can see extremely dilated right atrium and plicated right ventricle at the bottom. The picture on the right shows the location and orientation of the bioprosthetic bulb. The movie shown on the left is an intraoperative T image obtained in a mid-esophageal position at zero degree. It looks like a front chamber view. However, there seem to be four structures in the right-sided heart and you don't see the prosthetic bulb. In such situation, actual CT image is useful to identify the structures. As shown on the right, the structure one to four is IVC, the posterior and anterior right atrium, and the plicated right ventricle, respectively. In this case, the prosthetic bulb was also playing in the four chamber view. It was actually visualized by advancing the probe near the stomach. To summarize part two, thorough understanding of patient's history is crucial. Imaging modalities such as CT or MRI provides valuable information for interoperative TE. This is the last part of my talk. In this part, I'm going to demonstrate interoperative TE images of, sorry, of, of adult congenital heart disease affecting cardiac septation. The first one is ASD. 
ST is an abnormal communication between the atria. Most patients with ASD present with volume overload on the right sided heart and pulmonary hypertension. There are four types of ASD as shown in the slide. Intervention indicated intervention is indicated for large defects. Metaesophageal bicaval view is useful in visualizing ASDs. As shown on the left, secondum AST is located in the center of the septum, whereas sinus venosus AST is located near the orifice of vena cava. The ostium primum AST is an exception, which is best visualized in the, in the mid esophageal four chamber view. The 2D mode is of limited value in visualizing the whole image of the defect because the atrial septum is a thin membrane. The 3D mode is useful to achieve this task. The movie shows large multiple SD with some residual tissue. VST is the second most common congenital defect among adults after a bicuspid aortic bulb. VST causes mainly pressure and volume overload on the right side of ventricle and pulmonary hypertension. Currently, VST is classified into four types. Perimembranous, inlet, muscular, and outlet. The light ventricular infraoutflow view is useful in visualizing perimembranous and outlet VSD. Perimembranous VSD is located near the tricuspid bulb, as shown on the left, whereas outlet VSD is located near the pulmonic bulb. Inlet VSD is best visualized in the four chamber view. In inlet VSD, the defect is seen just below the, the atrial ventricular valve. Inlet VSD is often associated with abnormal attachment of valve leaflets or cords and therefore valve dysfunction. Jubal defect is a rare subtype of perimembranous VSD in which the left ventricle communicates the right atrium. Jubal defects can be classified into two types. In the supra type, the defect is located above the tricuspid iris as shown in the movie. In the infravascular type, the defect is located below the level of the tricuspid annulus. However, the shunt flows into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve. Doppler interrogation is useful in assessing the nature of abnormal blood flow. The left ventricular long axis view is suitable for this purpose. The shunt flow across the BSD occurs below the aortic during systole. The differential diagnosis of VST includes rupture of the sinus of valsalva aneurysm. Sinus of valsalva aneurysms most commonly occur in the right coronary sinus, and their rupture results in the development of communication between the sinus and the right ventricle. The aneurysm shown in this slide is located on the non-coronary sinus and blows into the right atrium. Differentiation can be challenged because a two-dimensional echocardiographic image resembles to a jubal defect. In this scenario, a Doppler interrogation is helpful. In contrast to VSD, the shunt flow occurs not only during his history, but also during diastole. 
Malalignment BSD is a spectrum of disease in which the BSD is formed due to deviation of the outright spectrum of the ventricle, leading to the formation of tetralogical follow or a double outright right ventricle. Tetralogical follow is the most common type of cyanotic congenital heart disease. Tetralogy stands for BSD overriding of a aorta stenosis of the right ventricular outflow tract and the right ventricular hypertrophy. Most patients with tetralogy of furrow are detected and surgically treated in early childhood. The image is a mid esophageal left ventricular long axis view in an adult case with tetralogy of follow which clearly shows the patch on the VSD and aortic overriding. Later, these patients often develop pulmonic stenosis or regurgitation. The movie shows a color Doppler image in the same patient, showing severe dilation and dysfunction of the right ventricle due to pulmonic regurgitation. Transposition of the great arteries is a rare defect in which formation of the spiral system is affected. As a result, the great arteries rise from the wrong ventricle. PGA is characterized by the formation of the great arteries aligned in the parallel orientation. There are two types of TGA. If transposition occurs in a diluted heart, the saturated blood is ejected to the systemic circulation via the aorta. Therefore, patients with detransposition present with significant cyanosis and require intervention early after birth. On the other hand, if transposition occurs in an air loop heart, the right atrium is connected to the left ventricle. In this situation, deoxygenated blood is ejected from the left ventricle to the pulmonary circulation and thus physiological circulation is maintained. This condition is known as congenitally corrected TGA. The picture on the right is a 3D CT image of congenitally corrected TGA. I'd like to suggest some tips in performing intraoperative TE for adult patients with corrected TGA. Tip number one is to set the plane angle to either zero degree or 90 degrees. The full chamber view is obtained at zero degree as shown on the left. The right ventricle or the systemic chamber is characterized by marked trabeculation and the septal attachment of the papillary muscle. The image in 90 degrees provides an infra outflow view of the right ventricle as shown on the right. Severe tricuspid regurgitation was seen in this case. Tip number two is on differentiation of the tricuspid reflex. The literature suggests that valve replacement provides a better prognosis than valve repair in this population. However, transcatheter repair using mitral creep is performed in selected cases. Assessment of the tricuspid valve anatomy and the mechanism of tricuspid regurgitation can be important in such cases. The tricuspid leaflet in congenitally corrected TGA are aligned in the middle position to the normal. In the first chamber view, the septal leaflet is literally attached to the ventricular septum, and the anterior leaflet is visualized on the, on the opposite side. The posterior leaflet is located inferior to the septal leaflet and can be visualized in the 3D CT mode, uh, in the 3D mode. 
The picture on the right shows an enormous view of the tricuspid valve in the same patient, demonstrating severe deformation and thickening. This slide shows a case of congenitally corrected TGA with TO due to frail anterior leaflet. This kind of lesion can be a good candidate for a transcatheter repair in the future. To summarize part three, intraoperative TE study can be facilitated by using suitable scan modes or specific views. This is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sensei. Excellent talk, and uh, Dr. Hirasaki will introduce next speaker. Arigato gozaimasu.